Hey, it's Sol here to give some early impressions on the progression features in patch 9.2, Eternity's End. Let me be clear that I'm just focusing on things that make your character stronger, so this video is going to be nice and short. The goal is to put together what we know and address a few basic questions like, how mandatory are these grinds? How much of a grind is there? And how much of a pain in the butt will this be for alts or a player just jumping in? For context, let's look back real quick at patch 9.1. Its main progression features involved Torghast and Corthia's daily content. If we pull the curtain back though, specifically Torghast was run for Soul Cinders and Corthia was run for Catalog Research. The end goal was for higher item level legendaries and conduit upgrades, which to be fair, was not exactly a make or break situation for many players, but it was a mandatory thing for more competitive players. Corthia also had the upgradable gear that, well, couldn't be maxed out until just a few weeks before the patch 915 release. Putting those aside, running raids to collect and power up shards of domination made up the lion's share of grinding. The scope of the impact only reached so far because it was very raid-centric. The reward loop and benefits were mostly contained in the raid itself, but shards turned out to be very unfriendly for alts. A few lessons were learned and put to practice in patch 915. In general, 915 aggressively removed unnecessary hurdles for those who play multiple alts. Specifically, progression paths in Corthia just needed to be faster. In the case of Torghast, the feature needed to continue to offer rewards for a repeatable feature. Unfortunately, 915 missed the mark for raiders, but it did alleviate a lot of concerns, including covenant switching, anima trading, conduit energy, and the other features I previously mentioned. Objectively, things are better in 915 than they were in 91. Subjectively, you might enjoy moldy toast, but that's beside the point. Now on to 9.2. Based on what we've learned so far, there are no new renown levels. 80 is going to be the max. Conduit levels are said to have one additional rank added, which eh, makes sense. In 9.1, four conduit ranks were added. Two from using conduit upgrade tokens and two more that came from empowered conduits, giving a final value of item level 278. Going much further in this case, uh, it doesn't really sound like a great idea, or maybe it just doesn't matter. Farming Torghast is not going to be needed to upgrade legendaries to their absolute highest levels. Zone content in 9.2 is going to manage this. You'll still need to go to Torghast in case you want new legendaries, so it might be worth it to do a bit of farming before the patch. Anecdote, I ended up accidentally doing a lot of Torghast for the sake of renown farming. Go figure. We learned a lot about the 9.2 experience thanks to the Starting Zone podcast, which had an interview with lead game designer Morgan Day. According to him, the 9.2 content is mostly focused on exploration and that raiders could completely ignore it, which is a little bit misleading. More on that later. The zone progression feature in 9.2 is called the Cypher of the First Ones. If we want to break this down to its most basic parts, it's a clickable tree thing that slowly opens up more of the zone. Whether it's being able to travel to new locations, zone buffs, and who knows what else. And it already doesn't even look like this. This access will let characters take on newer and greater challenges for what should be some pretty significant gear rewards. But there's also the question of what'll be the difference in experience between our mains and freshly leveled characters that ended up skipping pretty much everything and only have a renowned level of 40. That's where this character comes in. Poka, poke, or I don't know how to pronounce it, but whatever. It's a companion slash bodyguard that probably has a close relationship with the Cypher, and you can kind of decorate the thing. From the looks of it, this contraption can play the role of DPS, healer, or tank, which might remind you of the bodyguard feature from BFA patch 8.2. Personally, I think having a bodyguard is a lot of fun, outside of those bugs that keep you in combat, of course. I don't know what, if any, personality there is to expect from a robotic looking creature like this, but I think this is a solution for players who are concerned if their freshly leveled 60s will be able to jump straight into Xerath Mortis. If nothing else, you won't be alone on your adventure. The vibe that I'm getting from this zone content feels similar to, again, Patch 8.2, where progression felt more or less contained to the zone itself. The feeling of being forced to work the zone is limited to how much you want your multiple characters to work the zone. Since testing is just underway, the best that I can speculate is that one character, which is like the main or the primary, can be used to unlock zone features. All other characters can reap those benefits and can receive a resource bonus from the primary character. It also appears that all characters can share many of these zone-specific materials account-wide or are tradable, meaning auction house. 
What does have some folks concerned are with making tier set gear, thanks to the creation catalyst feature, which from the sounds of it will not be immediately accessible with the start of the patch. For now, I'll speculate that this will unlock as we progress through the 9-2 quest lines and the cipher of the first ones, whose unlocks are supposed to be account wide. As far as we know, the creation catalyst makes tier set pieces out of gear we get from raids, dungeons, PvP, and Xerath Mortis content. And we're not sure if it does anything else, although I'm thinking legendaries. The formula for creating tiers seems pretty simple. You just need a non-set piece, you pump it full of cosmic flux, and voila, you get a piece that matches the original gear slot. Tertiaries don't appear, and the stats are fixed to avoid any question of having to use multiple pieces of gear to get that perfect roll. Meanwhile, Cosmic Flux is earned from all endgame activities, including raids, Mythic Plus, World Quests, and Xerath Mortis content, and there is no cap, at least as of this writing. There are several unknowns, but I want to talk about how long it might take to obtain decently strong gear in the zone if one does not take part in the big three, organized raids, dungeon, or PvP, and then turn this gear into tier sets by obtaining the Cosmic Flux from, I guess, just running outdoor world content. Just a guess, but the strongest gear in the zone probably won't be found until the cipher of the first ones is fully unlocked. Here's what's kind of interesting though, even if we are speculating. If I'm in a situation where I value having a complete set bonus over item level, there is going to be a path where I can farm up this cosmic flux and create a lower item level set of gear sooner than later. And then as I progress into raid or dungeon or PvP or other zone content, I can start collecting potential upgrades I can pump more of this cosmic flux into. This does lead to questions of whether this gear can be scrapped or recycled for flux that we've earned, but it's hard to judge until we know what the income values are. Let's revisit the lessons learned since patch 9.1 and how this reflects in 9.2. Here's a scenario. It's patch 9.1, I am like a strict raider, and I want to max out my conduits. My path to that is to run the Adamant Vaults in Torghast, and or to grind research in Corthia for conduit upgrade tokens. Now it's something that we tolerated, but it's sort of weird for someone who just wants to raid. Of course, it's not unheard of to go off the beaten path if it means obtaining something needed to succeed. But some players have long criticized the game for taking this approach way too far. For example, dipping into PvP for Azerite Essence upgrades. It looks like in 9.2, if I want Cosmic Flux to upgrade legendaries or to convert non-set pieces into set pieces, I can raid and get these resources. If I want more though, then I can do all the other activities, including repeating Torghast clears. So it's a very simple, almost no-brainer sort of premise. You can reach your goal with your normal routine, but if you want or need to reach this goal faster, there are additional options. Now, let me spell this out. This is something that the WoW team regularly screws up on, and maybe our feedback hasn't been articulated or understood well enough before now, but I hope the message is being heard loud and clear. Forcing players to go outside their wheelhouse has not been a good approach. Back during Battle for Azeroth, a lot of players railed on how island expeditions weren't very fun, but at least artifact power was obtainable from content all over. Imagine if islands were the only source of artifact power, I'm sure people would look at islands the same way they looked at Torghast before patch 915. Just from reading up on 9.2 and taking a minimal effort to fill in blanks, it seems like the WoW team is a lot more mindful of our feedback from previous patches. The Cypher and the Creation Catalyst features are gimmicky as usual, but account-wide unlocks are built in. If 9.2's feel of progression feels like 9.15, speaking for myself of course, I will be pretty happy if zone progression is given this much care in the future. Meanwhile, there's a lot more to cover in this patch that's more on the cosmetic side of things, and I'll be excited to talk about that as soon as we learn more. I apologize if there wasn't any new information to learn, but I hope that this piece was helpful for those who are catching up. Please hit that like button and subscribe for more 9-2 information, guides, and all things Warcraft. We'll see you next time. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay breezy.